very special. Their journey has taken them through plenty of wind and rain in this past month. It's not quite golden skies okay, above Cameron. Liverpool. Comes right, Thurston, Grubber, superbly flighted, right. and Josh Dugan might have had the bigger appetite to get there first and get fingertips on that ball. You know, it's just, um, you know, quality, quality finishing. Your choice. You've done it for 40. As Australia make their way out of the dressing room here in Wellington. <laughs> and now New Zealand inside the Kangaroos half. Johnson works. Oh, Thompson! Look at the speed! We've got an exciting group of young men who are, you know, going to represent Australia shortly. So um, we've got a lot of deputants, um, exciting deputants, and um, I'm looking forward to working with them and uh, looking forward to being successful in the Four Nations tournament. Pretty good yesterday. And I remember everything. It's always good to be in, in these sort of camps with, with the quality of players that we've got, and um, we're looking to win all of our games and um, you know make that final. So uh, it all starts with Scotland, and it's a bit of an unknown. We, we don't really know what to expect, so I'm sure we'll, we'll see what we can come up with during the week. Really looking forward to the game and. Um, you know, getting another test cap. Very grateful to be uh, part of the, the squad. England's a very cold country, but uh, it's got a, a lot of a lot of stuff uh, about it, you know, a, a very proud um, uh, English national team where we're staying here and uh, it's good to see the, the country and how much support they have um, back in their team and uh, I like to think that we've got that as well. Uh, they've got 14 fields here, uh, the recovery centre is unbelievable, uh, the gym's crazy, it's just, I've never been a part of anything that looks this amazing so, um, you know, we've got the, uh, the really good resources to use so we need to back it up and play some good footy now. We're going to have a first run out today, this morning and I uh, can't wait to show up on the boost for the first time with the boys. It's gonna, it's gonna be cold, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna be fun at the same time. You look around, you see like, the likes of Jonathan Thurston, you know Cameron Smith, Greg Wilson's mate, Matty Scott's It's just crazy. You're playing with the best of the best, so um, you sort of have to sit there and pinch yourself some days. But um, then, the, but then again, you're thinking, well, I'm here, got a job to do as well. So um, it's something that you really look forward to each game, and I just can't wait to play with all the boys.
Yeah, so you, you would. Joseph, it's okay. Danny, just come in a little bit. The players, um, yeah, want to play for Australia and want to play in the National Rugby League, so um, that's why the tournaments like this are really important. And being here at Anfield is a, you know, it's sort of a, a carrot, you know, um, as far as the players concerned, that want to play here in the final. So um, it's about the events, it's about you know making the National Rugby League exciting again, and um, to play, you know, playing venues like this is, um, you know, is, is very important. For me personally, um, you know, was, if you get to pull on the Australian jersey, you want to be giving it your all and give 100%. So, you know, it's not a right to wear this jersey. You have to earn it and respect it when you do get it. So, um, you know, no one's going to be wanting to get it and, um, you know, turn up with the wrong attitude. It's always going to be a big test, and um, we know they're going to come out and, um, and put it uh, against us and, and play real tough footy. So, we're preparing for a, a real tough game and um, it'll give us a, a good lead into the, the formation. Um, with hoops. With our session, uh, it's a warm up with hoops for about 12 minutes, I think it is, so it's on the, the far end there. Obviously, there's a new few fresh faces in, in, the, in, in the team. Was fortunate enough to play a part in his NRL debut, and uh, I'll be playing a part in his uh, Australian debut. He's one of five players as, as a senior member of the side. Hopefully I can have a, an input and influence on them guys remembering their, their Australian debut. Yeah, look, there's some guys that have been a part of this team for a long period of time. And, um, you know, Cameron's obviously you know, at the forefront of that. And, um, it's important to respect and um, showcase the milestones, but as a leading player, I think what's more important are these guys' five debuts. Um, and it was a memorable occasion. Um, we played in Wellington, my family flew over. It's probably the most emotional I've been before a game, singing the national anthem and standing in front of the Harker. So I know what those guys have been through. I've walked in their shoes and hopefully I can just you know, calm the nerves a little bit, but um, also play a role to make sure that um, yeah, they can feel comfortable and do what they do best in the footy field. Cameron Smith and Danny Brock lead out the two sides. No nation outside the big three has won in 12 attempts in this event. Cameron Smith will swing the left boot and yeah. Scott will have the first set of six. And already there's room over on the far side and they're slicing through the gap for the first score of the game. Blake Ferguson for Australia. This is the last little grubber kick through. Look at that from Cam Smith. That is absolutely brilliant. Strike, getting the last tackle, they're oh, going to run it, and they're going to run in another score. Brilliant ball movement, and Maloney off the pass from Moylan, and Australia in under the sticks. Then another break, and there's loads of room, and they're going to go in again, and it's going to be Cooper Cronk again, and Australia early on are tearing Scotland apart. And already there's two, three men clear on the far side, and it's going to be yet another try. World class player. Oh, there. here we go. What a step that is from James Maloney. And they've got the ball away. And they've got men over on the far side. It's going to be Mansour in the corner. Dives for the corner. Oh, and they go through oh, the out. Too much Dad, it's through. Dug it all the way. Oh, look at the step. Ferguson won't catch him. Dug it under the post. Brilliant early score. Short pass inside and Frisell will pass his way over. And he deserves that. But there's still time for a few more points. There's going to be four at least here as Australia absolutely tear them apart. To Maloney. Oh, oh, here we go. 
Here we go, Trebovic is on his inside. Trebovic is going to go to the line. Yeah, they've got the 50. And Trebovic marks at the half century for the Kangaroos. Matty, on debut, pretty impressive performance. Uh, what did you make of it? Um, yeah, it was a huge honour and privilege to pull on a green and gold jersey. And yeah, I probably couldn't have asked for anything more on debut, I think. My, my main goal was to just go out there and put my best foot forward and do my role for the side. And um, Yeah, it's unreal to come away with the win. To get a try. And uh, it was must have been pretty surreal to do that as well. Yeah, don't get too many tries, so I'll just <laughs> take them as they come. So, yeah, that was obviously um, awesome to get one there at the end. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. And, yeah, um, I'll remember that one for a while, yeah. Cameron, how did it feel to make uh, Pete Hormel's record? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, this is his last game. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're actually on our team walk this morning and Mel grabbed me and uh, sort of let me know um, I was equaling his his record. And it was funny, it was, I got 46 test matches and 23 of those I captained, and that's what Mel finished with. So. He said, this will probably be your last game too, so, <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll get another start. <laughs> but yeah, look, I, you know, it's, geez, what do I say, you know, the, Mal was a, was a guy that I looked up to as a, as a young boy, he's, he, uh, he was part of my dream to become a, an Australian representative and I've been lucky enough to be coached by Mal for a long time now, um, but obviously, you know, over this last sort of 10 months at this level has been quite special. And, be able to play you know, the same amount of games as you know, a kangaroo legend, that's, yeah, that's quite humbling for myself. We're at Donington Park, home of British Motorway. Let's go check it out. Yeah, first time racing on a, on a car track and, you know, to, to drive in a McLaren, a bit of horsepower. Once I got the first lap out of the way, I thought I was uh, Mark Scave, so no, it was good fun. It was uh, pretty scary to be on the side. It's the first time that I've ever did something like this. and. Uh, to be honest, I was, I was thinking about chicken and out and not doing it, but um, you know, you, you got great, great drivers alongside you, and um, you know they sort of you know take you through it all. But you know, once you go past the first lap, it's it's pretty pretty fun. It's high class and you know, no wonder why these teams want to come here and, and use these facilities because it's just amazing. Uh, no, as a team we're, we're feeling pretty good after um, two wins so far so um, confidence is definitely high and um, the team's preparing well so far um, leading to this game because you know, we know the, the Kiwis are coming off a you know, tight win against England and they, they definitely want to you know, get one back on us after, after Perth. So, uh, as a team, we, we definitely need to, um, you know, step up the level and, you know, be ready for, for this week. Just being around the calibre of players that we have here, it's, it's definitely been a highlight of my career, just to learn off them. and and uh, yeah, excel my game to a new level. It's, it's definitely been, um, yeah, been a, a great, uh, great, great few weeks so far, and um, it's, yeah, it's gonna get better. We're tr training on some really great fields, and, and even the weights facilities and um, recovery facilities are unreal, so um, it's been a good experience so far. We've picked um, 24 of the best 
players available from this season. And um, yeah, we've got two guys there, Michael Morgan and um, Jimmy Maloney, who have had fantastic seasons. Um, Michael Morgan partners JT um, at the Cowboys and. Jimmy Maloney, he just won a grand final in the half, so uh, both playing great football at the moment and whichever way Mao leans to, I think you know, they'll play well. 2014 we didn't beat them in the Four Nations, so we're looking to, uh, to change that record tomorrow. Make no mistake, these are two pedigree, pedigree rugby league nations. The reigning four nation champions in the black and white. And it's going to be a thunderous 80 minutes to look ahead to. We've got absolute quality here. They say the cream rises to the top. Well, we've got lashings of it. And I'm like a cat licking my lips, just about to sample that cream. Here comes Ferguson, who's making decent ground. And Ferguson and New Zealanders are trading in his wake here. Kahu is left as the last line of defence to make the tackle to Thurston. Quick pass from Morgan to that right-hand side. And Ferguson, Blake Ferguson, is over for the first try of the night. Jonathan Thurston just settles himself now and sends it goalward. Has he put it the wrong side? He has. And there's uh, oh, some out there, although we wouldn't think so with that play. Well, miscued, but the referee says it's play on and it's another set of six as well. But in the meantime, Valentine Holmes will try to finish it at the first attempt. Morgan is um, carrying it towards the width and flicked inside for Ferguson. Ferguson for Thurston, Thurston writes one tackle and a second and I think he's got himself over the line here. He's missed one conversion, this his second attempt of the night is not going to be missed. Left once more, Boyd with a pass, it's intercepted and a chance now to go the distance and he has got pace as well, the ball is still going, England's got a touch to him. With one play to go, goes out wide, they've got loads of space here, O'Neill was Wanting it for himself, but I think he's been pulled up short, has he? Well, he'll claim it. And that is that. And you have to say, copybook from Australia. A minor miracle, it's only 10 points to nil because Australia deserving at least that scoreline. What we need to do with the, with the football, we just need to keep perseverance through that middle. They've only made one error. So you know that fella, Cameron Smith, who's winning his 47th Australian cap tonight. New Zealand with a chance to shine through Qatar, who might just have forced his way over here. Maintains possession, maintains possession of the ground. They'll each tell you theirs is the best. Johnson has put it wide. Thurston to Gillette. Who's decided that that cul-de-sac is not oh, worth entering, but he runs back into yeah, another one. The, uh, oh, yeah. the final play of the set here. Well, it's not. It's a penalty. Oh. It's a coach killer. Every time he kicks a goal, he handed his tee to one of the kids in the Headingley crowd. And what's he going to do with his tee? He's picking it up and tidying up after himself. Over it goes. 12 points to four. It's back with Luluai. Now it's Johnson. Johnson slides it to that in-goal area so that Ferguson has to deal with it. He's done well so far, but how many more can he beat? Oh, oh what a bad play. Fantastic. Wow. Great wing play, but then he spoils it all with a quick play the ball. No, he's but, offside. He's... Yeah, they're offside. Yeah, Luluai wasn't squared at market. Smith picks up again, goes out to Thurston. Thurston puts it back. Quick hands from Darius Boy and a flying oh, finish. It's a forward oh, pass. Oh, Smith to Thurston. Thurston up to the line, a dummy throw, oh, but not taken. Hold the line. Hold. Blair with a tackle. And another oh. final tackle penalty given away by the Kiwis. 
Thurston with a chance to turn a 12-point lead into a 14-point yep. to four lead, and he has put it over his third success of the night, Jonathan Thurston. Little chip by Johnson, trying to make something happen here. Oh, Johnson, terrific! Oh. Now we see the magic. Kenny Dow to that right-hand side. Wow, what a try that is! Jordan Rapana will finish, but it was the magic of Johnson. Johnson with a conversion, which gives... Oh, no, he's put it wide. Oh. To his left is Bromwich, but he goes right to Johnson. Johnson, got to oh. win it. Oh. Johnson, oh. Oh. Johnson, has he got that ball down? What a big he moment this yes. is. The referee on the field says what? Oh, no try. Oh. He's now in the in goal area. Still has the ball, it's on the leg of the Australian player and it's up at that point, then he rolls onto his back. There's no evidence that the ball's ever gone down there. So it's no try, but that ain't the end of it just yet. Because New Zealand will take it back and play the ball again 10 metres out and they will have one more tackle to go. This is the last play. This is the last play. Luluai throws it left. Isaac Luke, now Kahu, Kahu to Kata. They're running out of space, they've run out of time, and they've run out of hope because Darius Boyd slides across and puts it out of play. Australia have seen the job through. How did you find the, the overall performance by the team? Obviously a very solid defensive effort. You must have been pretty happy with, uh, with the overall effort. Yeah, um, look, there, there's obviously always things that you can work on and, <clears throat> and do better. Um, but, you know, the two tries, one was sort of, um, you know, snuck down a short side and, and got over, and the other one was a bit of a, you know, skill from Sean Johnson. So um, it was what was good is they didn't break us down too much, but, um, you know, there's still things to work on. And the back three making a lot of metres from the back, that must have been, um, must have obviously been a help for the team. Yeah, that's what our goal was um, at the start of the week. You know, we, we, we have a talk together and we um, wanted to get over at least 100 metres um, for our back five. and. Um, I thought Fergo did outstanding, and uh, you know that's why he got me in the match and players player. And when he made that run, you know, in goal, I thought that was a really important moment for us, <coughs> the team. So you know, uh, if they put us into in goal there, you know, they're attacking our our try line and you know um, had us under the pump. So, but I thought his run was exceptional. I think overall the performance tonight will probably at about 75 percent, 80 percent of our capabilities. I think um, yeah, we built some good pressure at times, but we we allowed the Kiwis back into the game, and, and you know, like you got to give those guys credit. They they took their opportunities, and as Mal said, you know, we had opportunities to score a few more points out there tonight, but it was stopped by the desperation and the scramble by them. Um, so you know, it's nice to come away with a victory against the Kiwis with some some work to do. I think the, the theme of this tour from Mal's been about um, you know keep, keeping us fresh physically and mentally, and um, you know he knows it's a it's a long year for us. Uh, a lot of the guys played Origin and and, and deep into the finals, so um, you know it's, it's worked well so far. And um, you know we trained today and trained really well, so obviously everyone um, you know, had a good couple of days off and came back ready to train. For us as a, as Australians, so we just need to focus on what we can do better, and um, we can definitely get better in a few areas. Um, from our past, past games, so we're just um, looking to improve as much as we can as, as England are as well. I'm um, dwarfed against all of these sides, I think, even in my own team. Uh, Woodsy and Big Clem, Big Shannon Boyd, but uh, the England pack is, is is enormous. Obviously, that's where their strength lie. Um, they're they're big, but they you know they're fit and mobile and um, and can move the ball around a little bit too. So uh, no doubt that's that's where they'll be looking to play us through the middle, and um, yeah, it'll, it'll be a, a good test for myself and, and my other forwards. and World War II at a cost of 101,000 Australian.
It's very lucky we're here at this particular time, uh, the 11th of the 11th of the 11th, um, and it was a wonderful ceremony. And the opportunity to lay a wreath um, is a really big deal. It's uh, great that we could uh, come here and um, remember those that are paid the ultimate sacrifice for what we have today so uh, it was a very touching ceremony and I know the boys um, really appreciate it. It's a powerful message not only from an Australian point of view because we have the English team here as well but it's also a powerful message in terms of the two nations and you know to be able to recognise what's gone on historically, what continues to go on, it's a very big opportunity for us and we've done I think a good job. There's a lot of guys in our team that spend a lot of time in Australia, uh, coach Wayne's from Australia, you know we've got a lot of people and uh, just you know, there's a, although there's a fierce rivalry in, in many sporting codes, uh, there's also you know, a thing that binds us together. It's quite amazing that we can put sport aside on, you know, on days like today. And uh, you know, everyone appreciate it. Make us look forward to Sunday a little bit more now. And yeah, it's, uh, it's got, certainly got the blood flowing. It's quite um, you know, an emotional sort of ceremony there. Uh, and, and the boys really enjoyed that. We had uh, two former kangaroos that, that served in World War One. Um, Bob Tideman and Frank Cheadle to know that uh, you know those two former kangaroos that paid that ultimate sacrifice for, for, for us is uh, pretty moving. Full strength team on the field, I, I, I feel, and um, you know, looking forward to, you know, putting a really good performance in tomorrow. You know, so set up in the ante a little bit and making sure we execute a lot better than we have in the, through the series. Our, our mindset and our attitude hasn't changed at all um, for this game. We had a goal to come here, and, and uh, we never match that we're involved in. So um, there's going to be no sort of complacency around um, the preparation you know, for this game, and obviously you know, the way we go out and start as well. Tyson. He's had a terrific year of footy and um, you know, his first couple of games, uh, the one in Perth and one in Scotland were, were exceptional. So um, off the bench I think he offers you know, plenty for the team, as does Shannon, but we had to make that tough decision uh, whether we went with a more agile player or a bigger player in the middle. Um, but uh, we went with a bit of versatility because you know, Tyson can play at edges as well. It has been 10 years, one week and two days since a rugby league side from these aisles beat Australia. Left, Inglis can't get in his stride, or oh, can he? Or oh, can he? You know he can't. Eventually he's put down. Are they going to tackle him? Yes, they are. Eventually, my word, was he a handful. But here comes the last play in this set again. Again, it's an attacking kick. Kronk puts it high. The, the challenge in the air has been won by Percival with Dugan very close to scoring. Had Percival not done as well as that and a penalty for England. Yeah, too eager. Great take by Percival. It's going to be Sam Burgess looking for some explosion down the middle, but he's occupying ah, the minds of three he's Australian done. defenders and he's going to be put down. Still 20. Oh, it's a penalty hanging on too long. Penalty for England. 47th goal in an England shirt for Gareth Widder. It's the furthest away from the England line, I think, that Australia have finished the set. It's Hall who's put his name on that, but... Penalty. To square things up with 17 minutes of the first half played, and it should be and is a success for Thurston from the third. It's with Merrin who tries to weep back and the offload and there's where danger comes because Kronk will put it back to Gillette who straightens up. Look at the footwork from the second rower there, dancing through, but England's defenders. Now it's Smith and again they go for that powerful effort. Dugan can't keep hold, Ryan Hall comes up with it and the England fans react almost as if England had scored a try. They've certainly saved one there. Just held up, still tackles in the back. Hodgson again now, Widdup, uh, quick pass, low box, what a take! Jermaine McGilbray, the ball was behind him, he 
twisted his body to catch it in midair and scores in the corner. Let's see if England can handle this. John Keir, voice of doom. Quick pass over the top, it comes and Ferguson to finish in the corner. Uh, he might go for a, a, a replay here, a video replay. But I think the naked eye would tell you that was a try. He on the field thinks it's a try. Still has possession of the ball, still in at that point, and the ball's been crowded. Lovely ball. English defence has been superb, especially on the left-hand side. And Johnny Beatman has been brilliant. Weston curling it in. No danger of hitting the post there. What's there? And, and what were you saying about it being a pretty tough kick? And then you have one set of six just before half-time. Instead, it's Australia attacking. Inglis looking for room to offload, can't do so. We're going to go back. The referee was playing an advantage. Sets it off right, we'll curl it in, no doubts about that one. The flags are up from the touch judges. Thurston's kick makes it, confirms it as Australia's half. It's a good test match football, I think um, both teams really physical through the middle third and uh, a little sloppy on our penalties, but um, I hope we can tie up that area, play the ball down the other end and score some points. So England in with a chance here, very much in the game. And, um, it has been a recurrent theme of recent years, though, hasn't it? Hodgson done his right and goes left, and then finds a gap! Oh! Oh! Nearly. Brilliant. I don't think, I don't think any, any criticism of Sam Burgess. That was a very, very difficult pass to take. In a familiar position here, 10 yards out, and coming down this blindside, Inglis with a carry, and with a first play from the back of the scrum, Greg Inglis, that man mountain of a three-quarter, forces his way over, and Australia, early in this second half, have a two-score lead. So Thurston from the touchline, left-hand side, he kicks them from all over the field. It's a Sam Thiday, 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 yeah. It's big Sam, isn't he? Turkey collision, that, isn't it? James Graham v Sam Thiday. He's copped one, isn't he? Two tackles to go, Australia closing in. Cameron Smith again, Scott will just hammer it in and he's got that down he has scored that Matt Scott I'm not sure how and the England players are asking why because there were enough of them there but sheer determination Matt Scott has got that ball on the line well, one of the simpler attempts at goal he's had today and no mistake England 6 Australia 22 so Australia in the driving seat. Mal Meninga said when he came here, he wanted, he wanted to put the green and golds right back on the top of Test Match Rugby League. And they are doing that in style now. Josh Dugan skips over for their third try in this second half. England's hearts are being ripped out. And it remains six points for England, but it is now 28 for Australia. Williams back, Winnett runs in it, Winnett reaches, Winnett scores! Officiating again at dummy half and throwing it out to that right-hand side and the, the reach, the reach, is that Frizzell underneath all of that? No, it's not, it's um, Matt Gillett, Matt Gillett reaching out and scoring, looking to make it a seventh success here. Has he got it? No, he's not. He's pulled it wide. Head upright, goes for that great pass. Good pass, Williams. Great try. Ryan Hall scores in the corner. No England game, it seems, is complete without a Ryan Hall try. Gets the pass away. This is Tyson Frizzell. Great offload by him. And a good chance for Valentine Holmes to cap this performance with an acrobatic try. But it has been a memorable day in terms of the quality that we have seen from the Australian Kangaroos. Jonathan Thurston will pull that kick wide, six out of eight. Happy. But 36 points to 18. <laughs> the quality, the pedigree, the sheer class of Mal Meninga's side has shone through in this second half. They are littered with superstars who've shown what they're about today. Full marks to, I think, England, who you know, I thought played extremely well and we had to play really well to, to match them. And, um, and we've said a few things at half-time that I think you know, we fixed up a few things with our attack and, and from there I, I thought our second half effort was outstanding. 
I just like the resilience within the group at the moment. You know, we'll put on a, a fair bit of pressure early in the match today. Um, you know, they, they started well. You know, they were taking our line. They got the first points, but you know, we just hung in there and, and played to the way we, wa we, we wanted to play, and we come through. So that's, that's the most pleasing thing about it. Matt, um, England really turned up today, but um, still able to get over the top of them. Must have been pretty happy with the overall performance. Yeah, we were, mate. Um, look, nothing uh, that wasn't expected tonight. I think the the Poms, we knew they'd come out um, really strongly. They had a lot to play for. Uh, they're a big, big physical, aggressive side with a, a world-class forward pack. So you know, we knew the first stage of the game would be really difficult. But if we could go with them, then um, you know we'd, we'd probably outlast them for the for the 80. Which um, you know, fortunately, that uh, worked out that way. Yeah, that first half was, was really tough. I think um, it tested a lot of us, but. We knew if we just grinded it out and um, yeah, took them to the 80th minute that we'd, we'd get on top of them. And, um, it was definitely a great match, my first match against England, and it was something that I'll, I'll hold on to forever. You want me to start? Listen, I'm not doing this all day, OK? I've got things to do. <laughs> I imagine both sides are looking forward to, to playing on this hallowed turf and um, you know, just the, the, the buzz around, certainly the Australian camp is, um, is excellent. And they've got a great forward pack and a great challenge for our forwards, but I've said in recent times I'm you know, really pleased with the way we've handled everything, um, particularly through the middle. And we know they'll be fired up, but we know that they they want to win the game, so um, you know we've, we've got to match that commitment, and um, I'm pretty sure we can. to a thunderous Anfield roar. New Zealand desperately hoping to cling on to their Four Nations crown. Australia looking to make it a clean sweep of world champions, world number one, and Four Nations winners too. Jonathan Thurston coming onto this field, the fireworks going off. It is a terrific entrance here. Ah! <laughs> Field is ready for the coming together of these two great rugby league nations. It is a true heavyweight fight. The world number one ranking and a four oh! nations trophy. These two, certainly in Cameron Smith's case, we might be seeing for the last time in England. That's a great cutout ball, and Blake Ferguson, with less than three minutes play, scores in the corner. He's not going to be rushed. And he has just, just got it over there. It was a, a disastrous one for him, but look at this. Suddenly the ball back inside for Kenny down again. They're creating the numbers. Johnson now makes some space, puts it out. Tohu Harris can't pick it up. Instead, it's Valentine Holmes, and Holmes puts the foot down the other way. They're chasing here. Look how many back in black. Australia in very decent position. Nerin again, flicks it away. Safe hands from Smith, and it's eventually it to Darius Boyd. And Boyd's fat pass finds Josh Dugan. Australia in for a second. 
Last tackle to come. Kronk gets the ball away, despite the attention of Isaac Luke, and the leap has not provided safety for New Zealand. It's merely another set of six, and Valentine Holmes held up only eight yards away, and then for too long, so a penalty Australia. So, Thurston puts that one over, his um, second out of three, and Australia leading by 12 points to nil. Now it's with Smith, and a short pass, and an easy route over for Trent Merrin. New Zealand defenders will look at themselves on the back of that. Merrin crashes over, a third Australia try. Eventually he kicks it, and um, it's over. A real platform from which to work their magic. Now it's Frizzell. The Kiwis hanging on. Frizzell is slow to his feet. Yeah, high shot, that one. I think. Again, it's a late call from the referee, isn't it? And Thurston does add another two. And Australia now lead. We're nearly half an hour play, 20 points to nil. Australia have been in the final of all of them. And it looks like they're going to win their, uh, their sixth here. This is a, a good run from Dugan, and Kronk carries it on. Thurston's there to take the ball. Johnson stops him in his tracks. Little bit of help from Eastwood. Last tackle, Smith again. Comes right, Thurston, Grubber, superbly flighted, and right. Josh Dugan. Lovely little death kick, and Dugan's the one with, with as you brightly call it, Dave, the great just, appetite. He wanted to ground that ball, just but the New Zealand team wanted to uh, shepherd it to safety. Quality, quality finishing. He's curled it, oh, he's hit the post. And it's run oh. on hard, and it is not quite from Inglis. <laughs> Brings it back to the middle, Johnson. A bounce into the hands of Tapin. And um, it was Eastwood who tried the kick. It's played out, it's another set of six, but that's rather irrelevant, because as soon as the first tackle is completed, that will be at the end of the first half. Australia leading here by 24 points to nil. As a final, no contest, but as a demonstration of high-class rugby league, Australia have no comparison. No reason I'll come out, be ready for anything, and just uh, play our game. If we improve on that there, well then, uh, you know, I think we'll, as a team, we'll be satisfied with that. Just while you're sitting there, reflect on what do you want to do in the next 40 minutes? One period of 40 minutes left. We'll achieve. Back foot, back foot. So here's Go. Smith again, the general in the middle, the accountant as he's known in Australia, always calculating. Boyd now across that right hand side, creating space for himself as it happens. Hold it there, please, mate. Ben, there's insufficient evidence to overturn the live decision. That will be a try. Well, the classic was it or was it not? And the on field decision is what they go with in the end. Darius Boyd is given the try. 28 0 kick to come. It's uh, Darius Boyd's 22nd cap here tonight. He's never been on a losing side. Thurston's put that wide. Final play in the set. Smith, Thurston. Thurston back door. Cronk quickly on. Taken here by Holmes. Oh, has he got there? I don't think he has. So we're going to have frame by frame here. We're going to get you to pause this when the first touches. The his hand touches the line. Now. Okay. Have a decision. That'll be no try, Ben. Now it's with Johnson. Johnson gets it away. Props over the flip pass. Great, great, great score from Jordan Kahu. Has the kicking responsibilities as well. Oh, it's hit the post again. So we're seeing a response here from New Zealand. English, though, with a great break. And then the pass to Valentine Holmes. Holmes with a step inside Kahu. Gets the pass away to Darius Boy. Boy throws behind Cooper Crook who still chases it, knows he's at Anfield, tries a bit of soccer skills. He's not very good at that, and Kata drops on it. But it was a voluntary tackle, I think, he's given here. As he is certainly given the penalty for Australia, and it's all getting a little red-blooded now in the middle. Johnson, Kenny Dow, inside Inglis, away from Thurston, meets his match, does he, in Boyd Cortner, kept alive, and it's still a, a dancing step in Kata! Second of the game, so the Kiwis through Kahu find themselves with just another little foothold. Here he 
he comes, started it right, stayed right, very straight. And uh, Kevin Proctor spent a bit of time at Melbourne Storm. Kick is high, Ferguson has to advance a yard or two and leaps well, it's going to be a penalty. Yeah, in in the air. Last play, where does it go? Smith to Thurston, here comes the run of Cordner, who's bullying his way over the line. Boyd Cordner might just have written the last word on this 2016 season. Never any doubts really from kickoff, but Australia are going to be crowned four nations winners. Looking to add another two points to his test match tally, and he does. 34 points to eight, Australia lead. Still another set of six here for New Zealand. They're entertaining to the last. Isaac Lund takes it in. That is the last though. And for all that flair and enterprise in the last few seconds, it comes to all in the final reckoning. It is Australia who are elevated back to top spot in World Rugby League. It's official now, we knew it before anyway, but they are world champions, world number one, and the Four Nations winners. Yeah, just too good. You know, they've been so efficient with great leadership and great manage, uh, game management. Thoroughly deserved number one in the world, number one in this competition, and they'll take some beating in next year's World Cup. So Cameron Smith takes hold of the trophy, and they have got the whole world back in their hands. World champions, world number one ranking, and now a Four Nations title regained. Darius, uh, man of the match in a Four Nations final. You must be uh, ecstatic with the with the result uh, as, as well as that award. Yeah, very happy. I think um, my first few games in the tournament went probably my best and um, I'm really happy to play one of my better games in the final and help the boys and contribute to the to bringing back the trophy to Australia, which is really pleasing. How have you found the tour in general and the I guess the bond that's developed between this group of players? Oh, look, mate, it's one of the best groups ever. Um, I really enjoyed it. I can't believe it's coming to an end. Um, I think we've been in camp for the last six weeks and it did, it feels like the other day we we're just in Perth. So look, it's it's pretty disappointing to, to, to leave the boys tomorrow, but um, you know, all good things do come to an end, but you know, how hard we've worked over the last six weeks, it's, it, it's a great reward for the boys and you know, it's something I'll never forget and you know, get all the boys to sign the jersey and it's definitely going up in the, uh, you know, in the pool room. If you used to buy into everything we've, we've tried to achieve, we have achieved over the last uh, since, since May, but certainly this, this tour has been extraordinarily good and I'm really, really thankful uh, for everyone's contribution and by Thank you.